Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to talk about methods of extracting data off of your SD memory card via FTP. We're going to do this a couple ways. Uh, one, just by enabling the FTP server on the Redline device. And then we're also going to use the FTP sync command to automatically send our data log files over to another device that's acting as an FTP server. So first off, let me show you what I got in this configuration. Uh, I've got over here in communications, um, I'm set up under here, and the first thing I always do, team, is I like to enable the FTP server. This will make the Redline device act as an FTP site, which will open up the SD card to allow you to see all the files on the SD card using a FTP client software. Without doing this, the only thing you can see over the web page is the files that are in the log directory. You can't get to any other directories from the web page. So by doing this, it's like plugging it into your USB port. The SD card shows up as a, another drive on your laptop. So I always enable this, and then I set it up for anonymous for this. Uh, otherwise, you can go into Security Manager and set up users, but that's more work than I want to do today. Uh, next, then, is over here in the Sync Manager, the sync manager, I've also enabled this as well. So in the sync manager, I've got enabled here, which is going to allow me this time, this HMI, to act as an FTP client, and it's going to send the data over to a server somewhere else. So this is going to act as a client here and transfer the data. In this case, uh, I want you to notice that it's going to go to some device at IP address 192.168.222. Dot two, two, two. Just remember the 222. Two, two. That's all you really got to remember. Because I'll show you where that is in a second. And then I've also enabled in here the log file sync, which enables this section right here in here. And I've got it set up, I hope, to transfer the data every five minutes. So this is going to happen behind the scenes automatically for us. So that's going to go on. Now I also want to do another thing. I want to show you how you can manually execute a FTP put command where you could manually move a file from here over to the FTP site. And so what I'm doing here for that exercise is on display page I have a button here and when I press this button, let me show you what I do here. So I go to properties of the button. When I press the button there's a, a tag called FTP push. If I go to action, if you notice I momentarily set a flag tag called FTP push. Well, hold on, let me, let me right click here and jump to, which takes me directly to that tag or tags associated. So look, now I go to data tags on the left. Here's that tag. Notice team that I'm using the triggers tab and I say when it's active on, in this case, I could have did this at the display page, but I'm doing it this way. Here, I then call a program called FTP send. So down here in programs, if I click on programs, I actually have a program here called FTP send, and I'm just merely using a function, and that means I'm in the lower right-hand corner of Crimson and System. In functions, there's a category called FTP. I'm using the function called FTP put file. And what this function does is it will take a file in this location, depending on what directory or whatever, this means it's at the root directory. There's a file called drivers.csv and it will put it onto the FTP site with the name of companycodes.csv whenever I push that button. Now, if it works correctly, success will equal one, and I'll put that on display, this grab complete equals one, and then after some certain amount of time, I reset that back to zero. So let's see if this works. So I got that running. I'm gonna go to the web server. and Put this back here. All right, so let's go to the web server here, and Oh, you know what I should do? Hold on. Let me show you the FTP server, because that's part of this equation, too. So I'm using, for my server, in this case, I could have used my laptop, but I'm going to open up and use a DA70 Redline product that's configured just as a server. What do I mean by that? Well, just like I was showing on the HMI, if I go to con device configuration, in this case, and this guy, and uh, first off here, notice Ethernet 2, here's the IP address, get out of here. Here's the IP address of that number right there. And then this is Crimson 3.2, but the same settings are in 
If I click on the FTP server, you can see here I've got it enabled. I've got an anonymous read right. So this is sets it up as a server. Exact same setting team as over here in Crimson 3.1. When you click on here, that's the same setting as right there. So, all right, we're going to show this. Now I'm going to go, uh, I'm using FileZilla as my client software. And I got FileZilla, whoops, where to go? I just had it open here. There it is. So I got FileZilla open on here. And um, if you notice, let me go ahead and start a new connection to both these. That way you guys can see completely. Okay, so I have no, not connected anything here. If I hit the pole down here and go to local HMIs, I'll click on the CR3K. This is the SD card that's in the HMI. Notice the file here called drivers.csv. That is the file that I intend or hope to manually move over to the DA70 that's acting as an FTP server. So let me open up the DA70 here. That's this one right here, 222. I'll open another new tab. So you can see this tab is for that guy. So here's the root directory on that guy right now. Uh, here's that one right there. Okay, so let me just refresh. All right, so now there's a directory here called logs. Hmm, that's interesting. Logs, if I double click on logs, look here. There's already some files on this. Notice this is the 222. These files, these data log files, actually came from this guy over here. If I go into logs, look, my logs, JW and CR3K, go back to here, my logs, JW, CR3K. Those are coming automatically. Have already happened this morning since I've been talking already for six minutes. They've already updated uh, five minutes ago. So every five minutes they're syncing. So we'll watch that happen. Now I'm going to go back up here and I want to prove the manual uh, method working where I push the file. Notice right now on the root directory, there is no uh, company codes file. What I mean by company codes? Well, over here. Look, I'm going to take drivers.csv, according to how this thing works, and I'm going to convert the name to companycodes.csv. So let's see if it happens. Oh, that's the web browser for that guy. Let me go to, here's the web browser for our DA, or CR3K right here. So when I push this button, it's supposed to manually send it. So if I, let's click it, one, two, three. Notice that went to on. And then after a period of time, it went to off. Hmm. Well, if I go back to FileZilla, here's the root directory that's on the 222. I'm going to refresh right here, refresh. Hey, look, team, there's the company codes. It showed up manually when I pushed it at that particular time. Apparently, it's 7.33 in the morning on today. So uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show one more thing here. This came up in a conversation I had uh, yesterday. Uh, over here, back in my communications on my device that's doing the syncing, um, what if I wanted these to go into a folder here so it actually went somewhere different rather than just the logs? Well, if I go down here and call this CR3K stuff, for instance, I'll do like that, enter. Let's see if it makes a directory on that thing. So I'll save it. And download it and we'll go back to our FTP tool here so I don't see uh, anything in here yet that says CR3K stuff it may not have synced yet oh, oh oh I just refreshed look right there look at right there team now I have a base directory here oh this is so exciting base directory here click on that logs Look, there they are. Oh, that is just, uh, that's just too cool. Seriously, that is too cool. Okay, so uh, well, let's try one more thing. I, I talked a little bit further. Notice this is synced at 7.33. I'm just curious if I sync it again, will this get a new timestamp? I don't know. Let me try it. Ready? I should have put the clock on here. Oh, well. Let's go ahead and click. Boom. It says on. Should go off. It's complete. Let's go back to FileZilla. Notice this says 7.33. I'm going to hit the refresh. Let's see if it updates with the time. Oh, it does. 7.35. That is super cool. 
anyway, that's a quick example of uh, how you can use uh, FTP to push and also the sync. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, please feel free to send me an email. I'll certainly send you these databases. Uh, one thing I did interesting is in the databases, I took screenshots of the settings in the product. So when I share this with people, now the picture is probably for, uh, blurry here, but if you open this up in crimson, it shows up a lot more clear. Of course, I'm using a four inch screen to do this, so it's quite stretched. But anyway, hey, thanks a lot, folks. Have yourself a great day. See you later.